Hi, everybody. We're back. Now, don't forget to send us your questions on Twitter for, to answer during our session today. Now, I'm Nicola, and I'm here with Ryan and Jackson from Epic Games and Microsoft. Now, why don't you tell us a bit what you do? So, Ryan? Sure. I'm the uh, lead on the XR team over at Epic Games. Um, kind of work on all the various AR, MR, VR headsets we gave up. This one with XR. So. And I'm on the uh, mixed reality developer platform at Microsoft. And uh, one of my responsibilities is uh, getting uh, the HoloLens platform integrated into the Unreal Engine. Right. So let's talk about Unreal Engine and HoloLens 2. Now, there was this amazing demo that we showed with Landing on the Moon. Can you tell us a bit about what the announcement is around Ho Unreal Engine and HoloLens 2? Sure. Uh, we're, we're currently finishing up the native integration. It's been a, a multi-year effort at this point, kind of getting everything up and running. Um, it's going to be coming out relatively soon. Um, we're good, basically full support for the native platform, um, both on the device and then also remote streaming from desktops. Right. So we're talking about having a whole scene rendered on a remote desktop and the stream to a whole lens too, right? So I can render full fidelity on one desktop and then I can see it all in the whole lens. Right. It's a, it's a pretty cool capability being able to leverage your desktop and like the full rendering you know, package that Unreal provides and having to stream that right over to the whole lens and then have the whole lens stream back all the odometry and tracking your information back to the, the desktop so you can kind of work as if you were just tethered directly to the machine wirelessly. Um, and then the other half of that effort is actually getting up native running on the device. So we can run on the desktop. We can also run directly on the device. Right. So, so when would I choose one or the other? When would I run on the device? If you, just... Yeah, it kind of depends what you want. If you have access to a, a giant machine, a lot of our, our users do. Uh, and it makes sense to kind of leverage that and you know, go for it. It's, being, it's awesome. You can just like basically press a button and do that. Um, if you want kind of the um, mobility and being able to take it out on, on site somewhere or something like that, then being able to run on the device is kind of the best option. Right. And now, as part of the demo that you showed, can you talk a bit about the demo, what that demo was, and how it was built? Yeah, sure. Um, it was, we, what, what we wanted to show was kind of a multi-user interaction um, with lots of people kind of looking at the same holograms in the same space. Um, so the general setup was we had um, a dedicated server, which was kind of um, connecting to all of the various clients. We had two HoloLens users, and then um, another uh, kind of steady cam that was using a WMR headset for tracking. So all three were basically networked on a dedicated server, and they were all localized in the same space using the spatial anchors. So that means the Steadicam operator and both HoloLens users could all look at the same hologram in the same place and interact with it and talk about it, which is a really cool kind of collaboration opportunity um, that I'm looking forward to seeing what users do in the future. Right. And at the same time, since we are running on desktops, we were able to leverage kind of the full power of a, a ridiculous workstation. And so like the rendering fidelity and everything was really high. Right. Yeah, we were uh, pushing about 15 million polys with uh, full procedurally based uh, or physically based uh, shaders. Right. So it was. Uh, and that's not possible directly on the device itself. Like the device is powerful, but it can't handle 15 million poly. Right? Yeah, we were we were running some pretty uh, pretty intense hardware backstage. <laughs> it's actually really cool to be able to see that kind of rendering fidelity on a headset because you're used to you know the simpler kind of what you would do from a mobile chipset, but being able to see you know what you know, a giant beefy GPU can push and seeing that in AR is really cool. Right. Now, the HoloLens has some really cool features about it, specifically around hand tracking and eye tracking. Mm -hmm. How does that work with remote rendering? How do you actually handle that? Um, it's basically seamless, depending if you're remote or native. It doesn't really matter. The underlying kind of layer that you would build content to doesn't care. Um, if, if, it, if it happens to be remote, there's a layer that handles that and hides it from the user. So you just work with it as if it was you know, local. Right. Yeah, so all of our uh, articulated hand tracking and eye gaze gestures, they're all just uh, plumbed through into the, uh, the Unreal layer. And uh, if you target any other AR or XR device on Unreal, uh, you'll be able to seamlessly bring that over into HoloLens. So, right, so all the sensor and telemetry that this device is actually gathering is passing it on to the remote device. And the remote right. device decides what scene to render and sends it back to to the actual HoloLens. Is there any consideration with latency or how does that, or um, anything else? Yeah, there's obviously more latency when you're running off a wireless link and it's not you know, rendering directly on the machine. Um, but the reprojection and kind of compositor technology in the HoloLens does a fantastic job of hiding that. And in, I think in general, also AR is more uh, forgiving in that sense because you can see the real world behind it. So if there is right. any sort of float, um, yeah, it, it's not nearly as um, effective to the user as it would be in VR. Um, but it really is, I mean, it's very little latency. It hides it really well. Okay. Now, this is great, but can you actually do this through the cloud? Let's say I have a device in Azure that's doing our rendering. Is that possible? Yeah, moving forward, uh, post-launch, post uh, we'll be adding um, all of our um, uh, remote services and Azure services into, uh, into the device. So we have a, uh, an existing mixed reality toolkit, and we'll be working on bringing that over into Unreal. And so, so that'll include things like uh, Azure Spatial Anchors and Azure Remote Rendering. OK. so. 
let's talk about the mixed reality toolkit. So that's something that already exists. What are you doing more on the mixed reality toolkit moving forward? Yeah, so that already exists, and it's uh, a way for uh, for developers to uh, specifically target our platform and the uh, the big wins in our platform over maybe other platforms. Uh, but it does not currently exist for Unreal, so we need to uh, take what we have and um, uh, write abstractions into Unreal. We have the Unreal kind of provides a, a lot of building blocks to allow you to build content, um, and they aren't necessarily kind of full feature solutions for a specific thing. They're more like low level building blocks that you can assemble to build full feature solutions to things. And so as we look at what the MR toolkit does, it's basically taking the building blocks that Unreal already provides and then building up solutions for common interactions that you'd want. So it'll basically ship as just content as you, know, you would get any other content, but there'll be nice drop in solutions for things that users want to do without having to build it themselves. And if I already have a game or something I've built with Unreal, can I, how easy to support that to HoloLens too right now? Sure. So we're building this on top of our XR platform, and it's the same platform that we build all of the other devices that we support on top of. So any place we have a, a common uh, functionality layer, we'll kind of target that. And any place that the device uh, kind of diverges with you know, a feature set that is specific to the device that does something cool, we'll have a way of hooking into that as well. So if you have content that exists for other AR devices, other VR devices, you'll be able to target directly to the HoloLens. And anything that the HoloLens can do that the other device to do will basically transfer right over. Which means if you have content already, you can you know, already get up and running on a device. And then you can start looking at what the HoloLens can do and getting those specific feature sets like you know, finger tracking and gaze tracking integrated on top of that. It's also a really nice way to start if you don't have a HoloLens now, but you have a WR device, for example. You can start building content today and deploy the device once you get it, and then start pulling in those additional features that you can get once you have the device in hand. Yeah, and last year, we added uh, native support for the Windows Mixed Reality headsets as part of uh, the XR platform in Unreal. Okay. So anyone who has been uh, working on native WMR in Unreal uh, already has code that should just work in, uh, in HoloLens. But that is amazing. Now, you also mentioned things about spatial anchors and Azure spatial anchors. Can you tell us more about what that is? Uh, yeah, we have a whole uh, Azure stack of uh, uh, creating a, a spatial anchor, which is uh, similar to a local spatial anchor. It's a point in space relative to uh, feature points that the device identifies. Uh, Azure spatial anchors goes uh, one step beyond that and uh, allows you to upload those anchors to the cloud for any device to, uh, to find and localize uh, for them. So you can have uh, massively um, uh, multi-user uh, scenarios in the same space looking at the same content. That is incredible. So if I'm in a space and I've put a, a, a hologram somewhere, somebody else later on can come in. And because we've already mapped that space, they can have the yeah, same Yeah, so someone else on, on any device, on right. a HoloLens, on a phone, uh, can come in and uh, identify feature points, uh, pull down that spatial anchor data from the cloud, and see exactly what I've, uh, what I've pinned there. And I assume that's all fully supported. Will be fully supported with Unreal Engine. And yep, it'll right. just be a spatial anchor and content for us. And the right. fact that it's being, you know, sent up to the cloud and then distributed out to all the various devices and the abstractions between the devices, the user and the developer doesn't need to worry about. They just need to know that when we put an anchor here and the, the content sticks to that anchor. Right. Right. And with things like remote rendering, you have the full power of the cloud to be able to render everything in full fidelity and be able walking around the world and just playing with holograms. You know, have my holographic dog, and I can walk around in the park, <laughs> and then you can interact with other holographic dogs. Sounds awesome. <laughs> and it's all full fidelity. That's great. Just make sure you pet it. <laughs> um, what's coming up in the future? Like, when is all of this available? Like, when can people start using this? Is, is this Sure. We're, we're actively working on it uh, right now. Uh, we're going to push, basically, uh, early access kind of experimental version on GitHub at the end of the month. And so you'll be able to pull that down. And then we'll continue to update that as we um, bring in new features and, and just polish things. And then uh, once that goes out, we're going to start working on our next Unreal Engine release, which will be 4.23. And that will be the fully official um, supported release for HoloLens and, and uh, mix, Windows Mixed Reality. And then you'll be able to transfer over that when that comes out later this summer. Right. And, and in parallel to that, we'll be working on the, uh, the Mixed Reality Toolkit that we talked about earlier. Right. Is there anything else that you can talk about, about Unreal Engine that, people can, that you're super excited about that people can start doing right now? I'm just, I'm just excited to see what people build with it, honestly. Uh, there's a, lot of, you know, a lot of users have wanted it for a long time. Um, they, you know, they've had to use other devices. And so being able to take the content that they've built and, and bring it to the HoloLens, which is a super awesome device to use, I'm looking to see what they build with it. Yeah, and this project has been a couple of years in the making. And obviously, Microsoft loves Unreal. Uh, we've got our uh, Sea of Thieves rep right here. So obviously, <laughs> a game that was made with uh, UE4. So uh, I'm really excited to see what people make with this. But that, that, that's great. Uh, now, you also talked about the XR platform and how you can take a lot of the existing content that you already have 
Can you talk, talk more about how that ties into other devices as well and how people can take that? Sure. I mean, basically, we have an abstraction in the engine, both on the code side and on the content side, which takes common paradigms for, um, for devices, you know, for tracking, for rendering, for stereo rendering, uh, various optimizations for rendering. Um, input methods, is it controllers, is it touch buttons, um, is it hand gestures, is it uh, voice input, that kind of thing. We try to abstract that away. So users basically just look at what is the capability that I want. I want to render in stereo. I want it to be head tracked. Um, they don't have to worry about how the specific device handles that, which is um, a lot of work under the hood to make that happen. So you build content once, and then you can deploy to each of those devices. And as long as those capabilities exist in the device, then that abstraction works. Uh, but each device generally brings something special to the table because everybody kind of wants to pick and choose something. And it's still a lot of experimentation also in the space, like what, what works, what doesn't. Um, so hand tracking, I think, is a really good example on the HoloLens. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and we don't have that on any other devices. So you may have built something for a VR headset, and you deploy the HoloLens, and now you want to build some sort of input um, methodology that uses hand tracking. We'll have a specific way of doing that specifically for the HoloLens. Um, as time goes on and people see how awesome hand tracking is and they're able to actually reproduce that at some point in the future, uh, we'll start building a layer on top of that. So instead of having to, to target a specific API, we can target multiple devices. So we've kind of been doing that over time. So, uh, so I brought in uh, head tracking um, and rendering, for example. Those were pretty divergent. Now they're basically the same thing. And I expect more features. As the industry decides they're a good idea to come online, we'll start doing similar abstractions so you can kind of build content once and deploy multiple times. So how do developers get access to the hand tracking, for example? How do they actually get that? Is that abstracted, or is it specific for the HoloLens only? Um, the, the input method coming from the HoloLens is specific. And then uh, whenever we have a, a capability like that, we look at what already exists in the engine. Is there something that we can connect this capability to that users are already um, are using? And so for hand tracking specifically, we have a technology called LiveLink, which is the ability to stream in am animation data and, and use it for various, various things. We showed it um, off a lot of GDC demos and things. Um, so we have a live link connection. So if you knew how to use live link, you can use that immediately. And then we also just have kind of a blueprint library that allows you to pull in those points directly and do whatever you want with them. Uh, um, we're going to be showing later today in another talk, basically like a, how to get started with Unreal thing. And, and part of that is showing directly that, like, how do I hook up hand tracking and use it in my application? It's relatively simple. Right. So you have a talk today that will be streamed and recorded, yep. I assume. So people should definitely go and check that out as much as they have. Is there any set of? Uh, assets or anything that people can share and use as part of this Unreal Engine that work really great with the remote rendering that people can take advantage of? Um, well, the talk, we have built a lot of content for the talk, so we'll give that away at the end. So right. kind of, it's a bootstrapping process for people to get started. And uh, if you have Unreal content that exists today and it makes sense for it to run on the device, it will run on the device. What about the demo that we saw with the, uh, the moon landing? Is that something that people can use right now or take a, take a look at that? The capabilities to build it are all there. I don't know what we'll do with the assets, but uh, I hope at some point they're available in some form because they're really cool assets that we built specific for that project. And I hope they have life on beyond it because they were, you know. The amount of time that went into to making them uh, historically accurate and uh, technically accurate was immense because they wanted to kind of show it as a museum piece. So yeah, I hope you have a chance to check it out because they're really cool and uh, hopefully have a way of seeing them in the future. I imagine there was a whole team of designers and developers working on this demo. I mean, the quality of this demo was amazing. And it's like a movie, actually, you're watching in front of you. So yeah, we, we basically have like a, a, a very talented special projects team who, who worked extremely hard on that for a long time. And it wasn't, wasn't just us. You know, bringing up the, the, um, the HoloLens basically as it was a prototype to try to build something on top of it of that fidelity was a challenge. And Microsoft did a, a lot of work on that side, too. Awesome. Well, I appreciate so much for taking the time and talking about this. Is there any last call to action you want to tell developers right now how to get started? Um, take a look at the talk and take a look at the GitHub release when it comes out, and then look for the full release in 4.23. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, Christina has been exploring the floor all morning. So let's go ahead and see what she's up to right now. <laughs> 